Does that help? No amount of licking will stop it from melting. I think this is the smallest. Every time I get into an elevator, I say this is the smallest, but this is the smallest. Hello. Hello. So there are countless different ways you can see Rome and enjoy the food scene. Now this guide is not going to try to give you every single restaurant because there's simply too many. The goal of this video is to try to show you some of the best ways you can experience the food and today we have I think one of the coolest ways we're going to do it. We're going to be preparing our own Italian food here in the kitchen of Benny and Valeria. So you're going to start by making tiramisu from scratch. Okay. Then we're going to be making homemade pasta that's going to turn into ravioli. Okay. And then we're going to make potato gnocchi. Benvenuti. To the start of an exciting cooking class. Benvenuti. Benvenuti. Benny is specialized in wine and cheeses, whereas Valeria has specialized more on the pastry side. Benny was telling me that just like there's fine wines, just like there's fine cheeses, the same could be said with olive oils, which I've never heard that till today. Oh yes. They're saying they're gonna ruin olive oil for us. We'll never be able to have store-bought olive oil ever again. <laughs> I can't buy olive oil anymore because of you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is a flashback to my childhood. <laughs> I'd be like a dog whenever I saw my mom I know. making whipped cream. I'd just come into the kitchen and I'd ask for the beaters after. <laughs> the very first step is you put a little layer of mascarpone. You just quickly dip it in the coffee mm -hmm. and you place, we're going to put two here. You can also put these as, you know, in a tray if you wanted a bigger serving. See? I can do this. Whew. That was a lot of work. <laughs> mascarpone. Tiramisu. The what? name is tiramisu, not mascarpone. Oh, whoops. <laughs> It feels so nice in my fingers. Roman cooking is actually quite simple. Typically, there's not a ton of ingredients, but it's about finding the right ingredients. And so, most of the shopping they do is by going to the local market, speaking with the actual farmers, not just getting it off the shelf. And from there, they build relationships with these farmers over the months and years. This is one chale. One chale. One, the most important ingredient in the making of the Roman pasta. Okay. Guanciale and pecorino romano. Ooh, yeah. This is like the entire piece of guanciale and you buy it like this and it's a pork jowl. It's it's this part. Yeah. It's delicious. But you'll see how, how this fat changes when it cooks. Wow. You can't compare it to bacon. It's of its own. And it's really nice. Let's face it, the fat just tastes good. Wow. We have a view of the basilica. Flexing my culinary skills. Things just got real. <laughs> We're running it through this machine, which is going to give us a very nice flat noodle, which we're now going to fold a couple of times. And now we're going to put it through again. And there you have it. By the fourth or fifth time, it gets like crazy long and super thin. I have to say, of all the cooking I've ever done, I think making pasta is the most enjoyable one. Not bad for my first time, if I don't say so myself. Take a nice spoonful, then you fold it over. Et voila! Mm. It's like a half moon. We're going to roll it out, then with this, you make little pillows. Little soft pillows of deliciousness. You see, you throw them in, and they, and they go down. And they will gradually start floating. And when they float, it means that they're cooked. This whole time, there's been a secret room that I didn't know about. This is the sunset room. The sun is just going down over Rome. And it is so beautiful. Now, I am no chef, but there's something about eating something that you've made. Even when you have no skill, but you've been led through all the process, it makes you realize that you too could learn to make amazing food. Salud, chicos. Yes. Bienvenido. Incredible chef. Thank you very much, guys. Wow, this one is so good. It's very nice. What kind is it? Sangiovese. It's one of the most common red grapes in, in Italy. It tastes home cooked. Mm -hmm. But I think what stands out the most Ciao. for me is because everything feels fresh. Like very good quality ingredients. The home cooked meal you dreamed of having. I mean, that's the thing we always want. We're always on the road eating at restaurants, but this just has that authentic feel. Okay, it's now time to put the gnocchi to the test and this is their family recipe. It actually came from their mom. We've got the two main Roman ingredients here. We've got the pecorino and the guanciale. 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 
I can tell you which one's my favorite because they're just both right up there. Mm -hmm. But this complements the last one we had so nicely, having the tomato come into it right after. Benny is a sommelier, and so naturally, when she brings out dessert, she needs to get something that pairs. Of course. <laughs> of course. Of course, because wine does not pair with chocolate. But what does? Strong liquors. Grappa is made with the leftover fermented grapes from the wine production because in Italy we never throw away anything. Our final part to the meal, the tiramisu, just a bit of separation from the layering and the flavors are amazing. You get that subtle hint of coffee with the incredible mascarpone. This is a local hidden gem experience. It is local aromas. Very cool play on words. Just make sure you do a bit of planning. This is one thing you cannot come to Rome without booking in advance. You guys have given us the most amazing evening. Thank so you thank so you so much. much. Today we're gonna be going and walking around doing a food tour and finding what is supposedly some of Italy's best food. We've got seven stops on this trip and we're gonna be going through an area that I cannot pronounce. Tres Evere. Tres Evere? Tres Evere. In Italian it means across the river. Look at the vines, a little bit all over. Are these grape vines? This, those are grapes, yes, ah, look at that. Probably not where we're getting our wine from. This is the stop number one. Thank you. The name of the restaurant is Da Ens. And we're gonna try some Prosecco. It's like a bubbly wine. And over here we have a main entrance, melon with prosciutto. It's something really popular in Italy. I have tried it and it's one of my favorite. What I love about this spot is that it feels so local. Like you would have never found this on your own. And so that's like the benefit of coming on these walking tours. Not only are you brought to the spots, but you're also given the history on them. You're told a bit about the street, why you're there. So the walking tour was able to get us in before they actually opened up. And if you look over here, that's the line forming just to eat here at this restaurant. Location number two is right underneath what used to be a synagogue in the 1200s, but then it burnt down. And then when it burnt down, about 500 years later, people accidentally found the basement. And this is the basement here. One of the crazy things about Rome is that it's such an old city, they have piled up layers and layers and layers on top of old floors. This used to be street level back in 100 BC. But as time has gone on, this has now become one floor down from the street level today. And that is basically the same across all of Rome. Most most of the downtown side, most of the city has been piled up and it's believed that if you go back to 700 BC, you'll actually go down an additional two floors from here. Now to get back to where I was going with this, you see this right here? This is a solid metal horse that was made by a famous artist in the Roman days and that piece was in here, in this room. They accidentally found it and now it sits in the Vatican City Museum today. So there's so much history buried beneath Rome that I'm sure they still have not yet discovered. Magro di maiale. This right here is pork shoulder slow cooked for four to five hours with a bit of apple, leek, red wine sauce and paired with the wine is absolutely perfect. Vanilla, brown sugar. Grotti. Ma buoni. It means ugly but good. Oh my God. This place is so local, they don't even have a sign outside. You just need to know where to go. They've been here for three generations. Okay, these are some tips for the team that lost. Rogelio, our guy, was telling me that if you want to avoid touristy place for eating, there are some things that you should follow. Number one, you should go to a place that closes for lunch break because those are the most traditional places. The second one is that you really have to find a place with a short menu. Usually Italian cuisine focuses just in a few dishes. Mm -hmm. Then if the menu is in Italian and it's not translated in many languages, it's also a good sign. And I think that's all. <laughs> but I, yeah, Very I thought it were really good tips to try yeah. to avoid touristy traps. And our next spot is right here. This is a butchery. A butcher? Butcher? La Norcite, Norciteria. Norcineria. La Norcineria. This is a great food idea if you're coming to Italy. Uh, you can come to butcher shops like this and just get a panini. Imagine having the freshest ingredients at your fingertips, pointing at what you want, having like burrata cheese, having mozzarella, having all the best cheeses and the best pork, and being able to make it into panini. Me and my headless boyfriend are gonna eat something called soupli. This is basically a base of rice with tomato sauce on top, ground beef, mozzarella, 
breadcrumbs and all this is gonna be deep fried. I have no idea how to put it together, I just know the ingredients, but it sounds delicious. Put that on the side. Mm. Put oh. it on the fridge. Mm. Mm. So one thing that's actually really interesting is a lot of pizza places in Rome actually do the pizza by the weight. So they don't charge you by the slice, but by how big and how much pizza you have. It's very precise. This is our next stop, Trattoria Casa Mia. Cacio de pepe, it has a, pepper, a lot of pepper on it. I find it a little bit too much pepper for me. It's really spicy. I think my favorite is Amarantina. Guys, our final of the seven stops is gelato. My mind is blown by that flavor. There was one flavor I had that was chocolate, coffee, hazelnut. Three things I love in one bite and it blew my mind. I really want to go back for gelato tomorrow for that one flavor. Today's trip was all with eating Europe and I really, really enjoyed it. I think it was perfect. It was long, but we tried so many things that yeah. we could have never tried in our own. It was stories. long for a reason. Yeah, it was perfect. Just bring comfy shoes, yeah. don't eat, <laughs> don't eat during that day yeah. because you're gonna have a lot of food. Yeah. We're now leaving our hotel here and we're off to our next foodie activity. But this guy right here, staying behind tonight because tonight we're doing some wine tasting and things are gonna get a little tipsy. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to drink wine. Ooh. Like I was mentioning before, you're gonna taste a lot of flavors. Alright guys, so with our wine pairings, we've been brought out some different cheeses here. So we've got buffalo, mozzarella, no, buffalo. buffalo, ricotta, buffalo, okay. buffalo, mozzarella. We got the expert. And burrata. Burrata. You wanna check the sensations you feel. New tennis balls. <laughs> <laughs> am, I, am I right? This one, I don't think there's any new tennis balls Damn. in this one. My night's already been made because I love pesto and that was the best pesto I've ever had. So I'm just learning this now. Very, very negligent of me. But pesto is actually made from basil. Didn't know that. The basil comes from Pra, which is like northern Italy towards Cinque Terre. And my mind has just exploded with the deliciousness that this pesto was. One of the incredible things about being a sommelier is you can't just be good at tasting wine. You have to know like what food pairs with the wine and how the food can transform the way the wine tastes. And in this case, we just had this incredible tuna that has been marinating for three to four years in extra virgin olive oil. 25 euros. Oh, 25, 25 euros for a little can. So it's expensive stuff. And one bite of the tuna just changed the mm. flavoring of the red. That's so much. <laughs> so our last wine is a sweet wine, and it's Moscato, and it kind of tastes like a dessert wine, basically. And with that, we had tiramisu, and it was amazing. Eight wines, a ton of appetizers, a cacio de pepe, and so many other amazing things. Total aside here, but this is super cool. We're fangirling. <laughs> We're fangirling hard. Like, as soon as we started drinking wine, people opened up, people started chatting. It actually became a really fun group to hang out with. People were talking about their siblings going to jail, and then another person's like, my sibling went to jail too. Just the but, wine, just the power of but wine. But the yeah. best thing was, and this is the best, the guy sitting across from us is the creative director of The Lion King. He literally directed the creative direction of he The did, Lion he King. This shot where they erased Simba. Pride Rock. Oh my, God. my mind was blown, my night was made, and I don't even care about anything else. That has been the highlight of Rome, has just been eating our way through it. I hope you guys are enjoying this video. Smash the like button if you are, and I'll see you tomorrow. There's another way to eat through Rome. I didn't realize Rome had a metro system until just now. It helps us keep budget travels going. Everyone knows the best food is home cooked, and so we've made our own home cooked meal here in Rome. But now it's time to have somebody else cook for us. So we actually just tried out an app by the name of Eat With and it's kind of a unique idea. It allows you to have home cooked food all around the world. It's not sponsored. Okay, so I'm intruding here on the chef. Guys, this is Deborah, and Deborah's cooking for us tonight. And Hello. what's next? So three nights a week, Deborah invites people into her living room from around the world to experience her cooking. Deborah's not only cooking for us Italian food, but she's cooking us Italian food from all the region of Italy. One of the things you'll experience when you come to Rome is you'll end up eating a lot of the same things through all the restaurants so I'm glad that we're not just limiting this Rome food guide to Roman food and it starts right here so what kind of food is risotto? Risotto is a, is a kind of food from the north part of Italy yeah and it's typical from uh, 
Milan and from Kedmon. And this is her son Ricardo. Her plus one, her helper. The one who's making it all possible for us to enjoy such incredible service here while she's cooking. You know, it's really cool because it's home cooked, but it still feels like, in some senses, the conveniences of a restaurant. It's so good. There was something very special about that melon. Lemon custard inside of it, the strawberry, it all tied together perfectly. If you want to have a similar experience, then just contact Deborah. Her email's right there. Email her. Tonight, we are double deserting. So, welcome to Gioliti, one of the most popular gelato places in all of Rome, because not everything is a hidden secret. Gioliti is known for making actual, real, authentic gelato. It's one of the more popular places to get one, and I think there's like three of them in Rome. All right, thank you. Thank you. We've done a food tour, we've made our own food, but of course, sometimes it's nice to have food brought to us. So, we have this really cool restaurant that I actually found by watching another YouTuber's channel. Simon and Martina did a really awesome food travel video to Rome. Uh, could I do the fettuccine sugo con coda alla vasinara? Okay. The fettuccine I just ordered will come with cheese, oxtail, and tomato base. So, so this is a food related tip. Do not ask for a knife with your fettuccine or spaghetti. This is what happened when I asked for a knife at the other restaurant. So, you know you're in a local place when I ask for a knife and she looks like she's gonna cut me with I'm it. I'm coming with a knife, but ah. not for you. <laughs> this is a block of oxtail. This is phenomenal. Guys, Italian food, so far, and I don't think it's gonna stop. It's been living up to the hype. Even the restaurants that don't make the guide, we've eaten at a lot of them, they're still really good. All right guys, going off of what we learned from our walking tour, we're trying to find ourselves a nice meal here. We've just searched deli on Google Maps. Let's see if they can serve us a good panini. So freaking excited because all the ingredients here look amazing. We've got the ravioli with ricotta and spinach here and some amazing looking pesto. So we're gonna make our own dinners tonight. So both of us to get a panini was six euros and 40 cents. That is amazing value. You can't go to a restaurant without spending at least like triple that, so. Basically for 16 euros we have lunch and dinner cover for two people. Here we go, pasta time, pasta time. Boiling water, boiling water, pasta time. Pesto. So I don't know if this is what you're supposed to do, but I'm gonna put the pesto in here just to heat it up. No? Where are you going? Putting the pesto to heat it up. Oh, okay. Guys, and that is a three dollar and fifty euro wine. It smells really good, surprisingly. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna try. But let's see how it tastes. Ching a ling, ching ching. Ching ching. It's not the best, but it's not bad either. But it's three euros. Three, three, three euros fifty. There was a two euro fifty bottle there, but we didn't get really? it. Really? I don't know. I'm happy we got this. No, it's al dente. Oh, it's looking glorious. Popping into my pesto. And I'm gonna shake it all about. This is a proper work party if I ever saw one. It's really good. I think I overdid it a bit with the pesto. Overall, really nice. Including the wine, the pesto, the pasta. We're talking like almost seven euros per person for a home cooked meal. All about that balling on a budget lifestyle. And now I'm gonna get back to editing my 10 weirdest of Japan video. I hope you guys enjoyed eating our way through Rome together. If you did, leave the video a big thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel for more videos to come as we head further down south to check out Positano. And guys, let's get lost again in the next one. Bye.